ladies and gentlemen, Violet Games here. Gonna be covering a really big hero in Overwatch. He's just, he's just large. He's physically big. He, he's he's quite the man. He, he's majestic. Okay, he's got the best emotes in the game. <laughs> but yeah, today I'm gonna be talking about Roadhog. I never thought I was gonna be covering this hero. I thought that. For the most part, Roadhog was kind of a one-trick pony, you know, hook him and kill him, hook him and kill him, and there was really no nuance in between there. After playing Roadhog in quick play, after his, you know, balances, I actually find Roadhog's very engaging to play, and still a very, very viable hero. His nerfs did not end him by any means. Roadhog is still just a man. Just, just, just look at him. So majestic. But yeah, let's go ahead and move on to his kit, and for this guy in particular i really want to take him into the lab because of certain weird mechanics behind him that i didn't initially know about so i'll see you there all right ladies and gentlemen welcome to the lab first stat we're going to be covering is the primary fire of roadhog shotgun or scrap gun if you will so the scrap gun primary fire is what I'm looking at right now. The type of damage you're going to be doing with this shotgun is going to be a shotgun projectile. This simply means that there is a travel time to the pellets themselves. And you're really not going to notice this outside of 10 meters. So right now I'm in 10 meters. You, you, you understand it's very kinetic. It reaches the target rather quickly to the point where I thought that his shotgun originally was a hit scan. So that's definitely an interesting thing, but again, you're not going to feel that because of the optimal ranges for the shotgun are definitely within 10 to 5 meters and closer and closer. <laughs> Usually the closer you can get with this thing, the more absurd it's going to feel damage-wise. So just to illustrate the point of them being a projectile, let's move up to the stairs, and you can kind of tell it takes about like a half a second for the pellets to reach the target. The speed of the projectiles are really, really generous. So this is probably my favorite projectile in the game for that reason, because it feels more like a hit scan. Moving on to the damage you're going to be doing per pellet, it's going to do 2 to 9 per pellet. And the reason this stat perplexes me is because nowhere online have I found a consistent basis for when this falls off like for example if i'm standing right here am i doing derp damage because the pellets are dropping off in damage or because less pellets are hitting probably a combination of both but blizzard doesn't give me stats on that so i'm going to leave the community with that one moving on to the number of pellets per shot we have 25 that means the av uh, the most damage you could do per trigger pull is going to be 225 i think that's going to double if you do headshot damage so just keep that in mind that's why you get a lot of one shot kills you're going to chew down a lot of tanks and with this absurd damage per trigger pull roadhog's scrap gun is actually a very good way to start tearing down barriers if you're ever having a barrier war between two reinhardts if someone pulls a roadhog behind the other reinhardt and starts getting up within that 10 meters and just shooting at that barrier with this all pellets are guaranteed to hit you're doing maximum damage so per trigger pull you're going to be 225 over the other teams with whatever heroes they're going to have also trying to chew through your barrier. So if it becomes a barrier chewing war, having a Roadhog is a great way to break through the mold. So, oh, I almost forgot. The ammo reserve for the shotgun is going to be four. That's probably the weakest stat that the gun has. It's the only real disadvantage it has. If it had more than that, this gun would be overpowered, 100%. That's how good it is. And the reload animation is going to be 1.5 seconds. Again, it's pretty average, but given that you only have four shots, you're going to be, you know, spread a little thin at times, it's going to feel like. But when you're playing Roadhog, you want to make sure you really pinpoint your shots and maintain your spacing anyhow. So if people ever break your spacing, go ahead and reload or hook them and then, and then punish their life. You'll, you'll find out that the hook and life punishment is very good. So how do I think you're best using your primary fire? I think that at 10 meters you do decent chip so like right here this is like t around 10 meters you're gonna be doing decent chip damage and just for illustration that's the mark that guarantees it's 10 meters just, just in case you thought I was lying you're gonna be doing decent chip damage this can be useful if there's a Lucio on the payload and your DPS is having a little trouble throwing in some extra chip damage and chasing the Lucio is gonna be a great way to get him off the payload in an easy and effective manner you're not gonna be you're not going to need to be a great shot to use Roadhog, and that's one of the beauties of him, is that ease of use. Though there is a degree of skill to him, like landing the headshot versus just landing regular shots, because the spread is ridiculous on this gun. 
But if you're not using 10 meters, where is the best damage? I say around 5. Around 5 meters, that's when you're going to start getting one-shot kills with it. So, like you saw, I broke the spacing from 10 to 5. Right when I hit this mark, it just feels so much better. Just one-shot kill, one-shot kill, and absurd damage all around. It's very, very good. That's all I really need to say. I think it's pretty great. All right, now it's time to explain Roadhog's secondary fire. Now, I'm just going to go over the stats really quick, and then I'm going to try to explain them afterwards, because it's it's very strange and unexplained in the wiki, and it's kind of frustrating, but I'm going to explain it all for you, just in case if you were unaware. Now, the type of the projectile that comes out of this is going to be a linear shotgun projectile. Now, it's a linear projectile to start with, but it turns into a shotgun projectile. That's what that means. The damage you're going to be doing per trigger pull of the secondary fire is 50 per projectile, and then you're going to be doing 2 to 9 per pellet. The projectile speed is going to be 57 meters per second, and the pellets break off at 9 meters. So, let's try to cover all of the nonsense that just came out of nowhere. So... From what I can tell, when it comes to the type of projectile, it starts off as just 50 um, damage worth of a projectile. So you see the black ball that makes contact with this target, that's 50 damage per shot. 100 if I get do it to the head. So, but at 9 meters, which is the break off distance, the projectile will also turn into other damage, which is a shotgun blast very analogous to your primary fire i think there's moderately less pellets but it honestly doesn't look like it when i shoot the gun so again blizzard didn't give me the stats on this no one is really explaining how many pellets are in this projectile i think it's about the same if i am to guess um just based on me playing the character the projectile speed being 57 meters i think meters per second anyways it, that's just the speed of it you, you can kind of see but as you can see it the projectile doesn't curve at all when i shoot it it actually kind of sticks to what i pointed at so you can actually really when i change the camera angle you can see the black ball and the pellets in themselves so that's just me trying to illustrate this for you it's a lot it's very very strange so let's talk about how to use it real quick Around 10 to 15 meters, I would say, is your optimal range for this weapon. Now, they say on the wiki page that the maximum range is 9 meters for this to be effective. And what they're basically saying is to get the full effect, you, you need to be at 9 meters. So to get the 50 and the shotgun blast off, you need to be at that range. But in all honesty, you can break the 9 range and still do absurd damage. So I'm going to stand right here, which is, like I think that's 15. We're just going to pull the trigger real quick and see how much damage we do. That was almost his entire health bar. Because the shotgun pellets break off in a much tighter grouping, just the pellet damage alone almost bodies a target. That's impressive. And I can even finish him with the primary fire at this range, which means he had basically no health. So when I kind of approach the 9 meters a little bit, I can do both forms of damage, I believe is what they're telling me. So like right there, that was a body shot. I just did both types of damage. I did the 225 per trigger pull in addition to that black projectile also making contact. So once you're around the nine meter mark, which is essentially here, you can actually kill them with one shot to the body if all pellets land. So you can kind of see why it's a little strange and absurd, but there's a weird gimmick to this. You break that meter, you no longer get that spread damage. So I'm gonna break the meter to where nothing hits but the projectile. It's gonna do derp damage. It's gonna do derp damage. It's gonna do derp damage. But right when I get to the nine meters, you see like right there, basically this is where nine meters is, you do maximum damage. And this L2 is an essential. I see a lot of crap Roadhogs not use it because they don't understand how it works. This is me illustrating this for you in spacing. This is like as real as spacing gets. So I'm just going to show you how effective this projectile can be at like various ranges. So again, we're a bit further out, like maybe like this is probably like 25 at this point or not 25. This is this is definitely 15. So that's 10 and that's an additional 5. So I'm just going to squeeze the trigger at the head. We're doing absurd damage. I'm going to back up even further. Still doing pretty freaking good damage. You see what I mean by how good this the secondary fire is and how underrated it can be? You really do do a lot of doo-doo. 
you really do do a lot of damage with this. I just want to illustrate with you guys how ridiculous it can be. And it even does moderate chip damage at long distances like this. Like, this is how many freaking meters? This is like, um, I think it's actually not lying to me. So it's like 10, 20, 30, 40. Yeah, that's 40 meters away. I'm still doing, like, decent chip damage from that range if the projectile is aimed accurately. So, like, that's pretty crazy. This is pretty, this is pretty great, and it's very underrated, but for the longer ranges, Roadhog can actually do decent damage. You just have to use it in the right way. So, keep that in mind, that when you're at 10 meters plus, go ahead and freaking use that L2, because it's actually really insane. You can get one-shot kills with this. And just a little piece of advice for you guys using this, it seems the best way to get headshot damage is to aim slightly above the head. That seems to be the best way to get it. I don't know why. But it always seems to do the best headshot damage that way. If I aim slightly below the head, I'm not going to do as much. Let's see if I can illustrate this just a little bit. Come on back, buddy. Oh, never mind. You just fucking dump on, you just dunk on people, I guess. I swear I tested this earlier. Here, let's go back to these bots. This is where I kind of tested it. Where it's literally just at 10. So I'm going to try to do... Oh my gosh. You know what, guys? Never mind. This is this ability is God. This ability is God. Just, just take me home. Just take me home. Alright, let's go over Roadhog's heal really quick. It's not a lot to cover. It's not super complex. The stats are as follows. You get 300 health points from it. The cast time has a two second animation. Well, you're all vulnerable. You're a stationary target during this animation. So keep that in mind. The duration of the heal once activated is one second. And the cooldown of the heal is eight seconds. So you can use it at your leisure. You know, just use it whenever you're down 300 health points or even less if it's convenient. Um, but don't always use it if your healer's trying to farm their ultimate. Like, if you have a Mercy on your team, and you're low on health points, but you're in a safe location to receive healing from her, go ahead and let her heal you all the way. It's going to help her get her ultimate, which is going to be much more game-changing than yours. I know yours is still very effective, and using your heal to heal yourself does help charge said ultimate. But yeah, your healer's ultimate is definitely more important than yours, so if you can, let your healer charge their ultimate on you, whether it's Mercy or Lucio or anything else. I'm just going to demonstrate the heal real quick, and we're going to move on. Oh, yeah. Felt, felt good. Felt good. Moving swiftly on, let's talk about Chain Hook, shall we? Chain Hook is a linear projectile. It has a damage of 30, a projectile speed of 40 meters per second, a range of 20 meters, and a cooldown of 8 seconds. So just to illustrate the range really quick, I'm sitting slightly out of 20 meters. I'm going to throw the Chain Hook, and as you see, it's going to whiff, even though I was 100% on the target. Moving up, and basically anywhere from here, I'm going to be able to hook him towards me. Now, when you hook a target, the best thing to do is try to aim for the head immediately and pull the trigger, and also follow up with a quick melee if it's a beefier target. This is just an additional way to get some more damage off, an additional 25, I believe, from the quick melee. And everyone pretty much knows this. I don't really do it a lot in my videos. I just like to go ham because I'm not I'm not a Roadhog player. I'm just here to give you my perspective, so if you're looking for a Grandmaster's tutorial on how to play Roadhog, fuck off. But yeah, 20 meters stick to it now i'm gonna show you some of the weird things about the chain hook well one being that when you hook a target from a vertical point you don't immediately center up with them so let me just show that off you see my target or my crosshair is not immediately on the training bot i kind of have to aim downward as i hook him to land the headshot so hopefully he'll respawn in a reasonable amount of time, and I can illustrate this again. This can also work from other vertical points as well, so if you're hooking someone upwards, they don't always center up with your crosshair. So doing micro-aiming just to, like, completely get your target center is definitely the best way to go when it comes to chain hook. That's just a little thing. Like, if you hook Farah out of the sky from a 90-degree angle, you're not going to center up with her at all. So, like, if... I don't know if I can get him from here, but... Yeah, it's just basically... God damn it. <laughs> but I'm going to try to show this off is that you don't always center up with your target and it definitely seems to be consistent with the vertical point so if I'm aiming upwards when I do the hook 
So, like, I'm looking at a 90 degree angle. He's not going to center up with me. He's going to center me, uh, with me on the ground exclusively. So, learning the different heights of the heroes as you hook them is also a little nuance when you're aiming with Roadhog. So, just something to keep in mind. Just give you some perspective. Yeah, but the bread and butter of chain, then follow up with sh with um primary fire, then quick melee. Still very effective. And you should do that at your leisure. Now, targets you're going to want to focus on is basically anyone you can grab that you know is going to be a linchpin to take down in an enemy team fight. Anyone that really was within your 20 meters that you're confident in getting is definitely going to be the trick. Definitely the healer or soldier 76. It, it almost doesn't matter who you hook, really, as long as you pull them to your team fight like you pull them in the center of your team that per character is literally just going to fall to pieces now certain barrier characters can get away and tracers rewind could sometimes get away but most of the time you're going to kill your target no matter who you hook that's the beauty of it it's a very simple ability now at further ranges or the furthest range being 20 meters you are going to have to pre-aim just a little bit to guarantee that you hook a target Especially with characters like Soldier 76 and Tracer, who move a bit faster, or Lucio, who's doing speed boost, or enemies who are just getting speed boosted by Lucio. You're going to have to do a little bit of pre-aiming. You're going to have to learn that yourself. I don't think it's that hard to use, though. I think the hook is very, very simple to use. And, of course, it will break off if they leave your line of sight. See, I just failed the pre-aim there. That's something you're going to have to learn when you play Roadhog. So, yeah, that's really all I have to say about Chain Hook. The final thing we're going to cover as far as stats in the lab is going to be Whole Hog. Roadhog's ultimate ability. It's definitely a good one in all honesty. There's nothing wrong with it. It's not like the best ultimate in the game by any stretch, but it's pretty simple to understand and use properly. So let's go over the stats really quick. The type of damage you're going to be doing with Whole Hog is going to be a rapid fire shotgun. Definitely the only rapid fire shotgun in the game. Actually, D.Va's weapons are technically rapid fire shotguns, but uh, maybe the um type of movement you're going to have during whole hog is going to be 2.5 meters per second you're going to be a bit slower and there is a reason for that and that reason is balance um lucio amping it up while you're using whole hog can be very very effective so just keep that synergy in mind the number of pellets per shot are going to be 12 and the rate of fire while using whole hog is going to be 7.5 shots per second the cast time of whole hog is going to be 0.5. There's a bit of a wind up, but it's not a long one. The duration of whole hog is six seconds and the charge required is 2000 points, which is about, eh, it's pretty generous. I'd say you get it relatively quickly. I would say it's definitely a moderate charge overall. So how do you use whole hog? You can use whole hog in multiple ways. You can use whole hog to kill enemies that are in backed up into a corner that it'll stick them to that corner and you'll cause them to die you can use whole hog to add momentum to a team push say the enemy team has a reinhardt and you're just tired of that barrier existing you can press whole hog to get through that barrier really quick you could use whole hog to push enemies off the map if they are grouped up around a ledge it's a great thing to do you're almost guaranteed play of the game if that happens it's happened to me a lot of times not not me doing it just me me at the receiving end of that shit but yeah <laughs> Whole hog has a lot of different implications. You can you almost use it as a panic button as well if you really need to, but I would advise against that because I think the best way to use whole hog is with the team around you. So, yeah, that's really the only thing you need to keep in mind when you're using whole hog. Make sure your team's around you because you are vulnerable while whole hog is being activated, especially to long-range heroes. Red Hog's definitely susceptible to sniper fire and soldier 76, so keep that in mind. So just for demonstration's sake, I'm just going to go ahead and let my whole hog rip. Ugh. Just kill people because it does absurd damage as well. It's pretty great. It's just a great momentum tool as well as just good damage. Like everything about Roadhog just screams good damage. My gosh, I can't even. I can't even hook bots. What kind of Roadhog? Yeah, I'm just not. I'm not paying attention. I'm doing a guide here. But you get the point. Whole Hog has a lot of different uses. I went over all the ones that I can really conceive of. There's probably more. I mean, you could just solo ult someone with it if you really wanted to, like I said. But try to use it in team fights. It's a really good momentum tool. That's how I kind of prefer to use it. Or if I'm just trying to get people off point or get past a barrier. Roadhog's just great for that. I love him for that. He's, he's just a lot of man. Just a lot of man. And uh, I believe that covers it for the kit, guys. I'm going to move on to strategies, tactics, team compositions, things of that nature. Yeah. 
Let's talk briefly on skill requirements for Roadhog. He's a very simple character. I don't think I need to go into too much depth, but let's jump in. So first of all, you're going to want to be able to track your cooldowns. Roadhog is a very kit-reliant hero, both for dealing and receiving damage. You got the self-sustaining heal for receiving damage, and you have the hook for dealing damage. Really being able to close the gap from 20 meters to like 1 meter is insane with the shotgun hero. And having a crit multiplier as well, it's just, ah, oh, it's just so good. Now, second tip and skill requirement is going to be mind your spacing. Your spacing as Roadhog, I'm going to recommend 20 meters and nowhere less than that. Because 20 meters is going to be the distance that your hook can reach to. Anywhere beyond 20 meters, Roadhog is vulnerable to fire. Roadhog is very vulnerable to snipers for this reason alone. And if you have 20 plus meters against the Soldier 76 or even a McCree, you can receive massive amounts of damage from these heroes. So you're going to want to engage most often than not at 20 meters. Your um, secondary shotgun blast can also do some damage at 9 meters plus, so do keep that in mind when you're using this character. Spacing is very important, guys. You, you, you track that shit. Now, third piece of advice is mind your environment at all times. It is probably the most important piece of advice I can give you. This is probably what gets Roadhog killed more than anything else. It's just players being inept and running out in an open field by themselves. You want to make sure your team's around you at all times. You want to make sure that there's a place where you can retreat to either receive healing or heal yourself in a safe manner. Just keep in mind you're always going to want to have something between you and a target if things don't go in your favor, like you miss the hook or you just, you know, you're, you're out in the open, you don't want to basically die at any given point. You are pretty much as vulnerable as you are lethal when you are playing Roadhog, and keeping in mind a lot of those things are important. A good place to be when you are Roadhog, in my opinion, that is very commonplace, is the payload. When you are playing payload objectives as Roadhog, staying on the payload 100% of the time is almost always viable. Very rarely is this not a viable strategy, because not only are you getting an additional heal from the payload, but you have an object that you can kind of dance around and hook targets, receive healing, and if your teammates are helping push the payload, which most likely they are, because that's the point of the, of the game mode, you're going to have a lot of coverage that you otherwise wouldn't have. Your barrier tank's probably going to be present there as well. Keep all this in mind when you are playing Roadhog. Are you ready? For tactics. Yeah, you are. I know you are. I can I can feel it in your blood. Okay, really there's only two ways to play as Roadhog, as far as I'm concerned. I thought of a lot of nuanced different like variations of of the two ways, but I thought it would be simpler just to boil it down. So first off, you have an aggressive playstyle. You go to the enemy. You just charge in there, make sure you're using your kit, you chew through barriers. You hook targets that are vulnerable, whether it's Soldier 76, Mercy, literally anyone who can be hooked is a dead man if you implement it the right way. Maybe not D.Va as much. D.Va has a lot to get away from Roadhog, but I guess we'll cover that encounter. You know, whatever. But most targets are very vulnerable to the hook itself. So keep that in mind when you are playing Roadhog, that playing aggressively is a great thing, and that's predominantly how I like to play Roadhog. It's the most satisfying. You get more kills this way. Though, if you run in without keeping your skill requirements in check, that being tracking your cooldowns, minding your spacing, and minding your environment, making sure your team's with you when you do this aggressive push, then it's going to end badly for you. Roadhog does require some team sustain, but most characters in the game require a degree of you know, team sustain as well, so you're really just going to have to feel that out with your team. And the next way you can play is more conservatively. Let the enemy come to you. I mean, there's no way to really play it and there's not a lot of nuance between the two play styles either it's just that one is you go to them and the other is they come to you this is really the only nuance because think about it your team's playing conservatively you're going to want to play more conservatively with your team because you're going to have the most beneficial fights in your favor when you're surrounded by people who can help you that's just kind of the bottom line you're still going to chew through barriers you're still going to get picks you're still going to use your kit in the exact same way there's not a lot of nuance to roadhog and i love that and you know, final piece of advice when it comes to picking between these two playstyles, again, just to reiterate, watch what your team's doing. If your team's behaving very conservatively, it's not going to hurt you to act conservatively as well. If, you know, the enemy team is split apart, you can be aggressive, or if your team is being very aggressive, you can often run with them 
and you're great DPS support. And if the, your team is actively distracting the enemy, that's a free hook. Reinhardt turns around to bat out a Genji or something, that's a free hook for you. You can pull him and put him in a really uncomfortable situation and deal out massive damage. So keep that in mind. Really, there's only two ways to play Roadhog, aggressively and conservatively. It's just, it's simple and fun. I really enjoy it. Proceeding forward, let's talk about counters and optimal matchups. Now for counters, very strange. So first up we have Widowmaker, Hanzo, and Pharah, but only on certain maps. The reason I chose these three heroes is because they are heroes that can maintain consistent spacing away from Roadhog at all times. So like Pharah, she can kind of fly away and kind of just stay in the sky if she's, a, a, you know, 20 meters plus, she's going to be able to stay away from Roadhog. Then you have Widowmaker, who's kind of going to hang in the back lines way out of 20 meters and do damage to Roadhog. Not only that, Roadhog's a very easy target to hit, so she can genuinely do consistent damage to him. And then you have Hanzo, pretty much for the same reasons, kind of being able to maintain consistent spacing from Roadhog, but only on certain maps. Some maps are more accommodating for these heroes than others, so at times you can hook Farah out of the sky, at times you can hook Widowmaker off of her vertical point, and at times you can hook Hanzo if he's trying to, you know, get close in on the team fight as well. So these characters definitely, definitely, definitely counters to Roadhog because they have long spacing where Roadhog can do virtually nothing to them. And then finally, we have Sombra. Now Sombra literally can effectively dispatch Roadhog, especially with team assistance, because of hack. Hack, if Roadhog is hacked, his kit is gone. That's his self-sustain and his ability to do massive damage out of nowhere from 20 meters with the hook. So, massive threat Sombra can be to a Roadhog. She's an absolute tank buster, and her weapon consistently is going to hit Roadhog for ma like optimal damage. Pretty much every bullet she fires can hit Roadhog just because of how fat he is. I mean... It's really, really devastating when you are hacked as Roadhog. It's not some place you want to be, but if your team's grouped up tight enough, it might not be the end of you. Now, when it comes to all other heroes, you can make the argument for both ends of the spectrum. I think Roadhog can be very well-defined as a double-edged sword in Overwatch. He can deal out massive damage, and he can receive it. So, like... Soldier 76 could easily kill Roadhog, but if he loses, or if he, you know, breaks that 20 meter spacing, he can be killed just as fast. Same thing with virtually everyone else in the game. If they break that 20 meter spacing, Roadhog can kill them just as easily as they can kill Roadhog. It really depends on the team itself. Roadhog is not directly countered by almost anyone because of that double-edged sword aspect of him, and that's one of the reasons he just feels so good to play, just because if you control your spacing enough, and if you're mindful enough of your team and your team supporting you, he always feels generally consistent. So yeah, when it comes to counters, most people can't. I think that the characters I mentioned in the counters, um, very, very... Those are the characters you're going to want to be looking out for, is what I'm trying to say. But in terms of optimal picks, I think that hooking everyone, aside from D.Va, is really, really devastating. Anyone who gets close to you is relatively an optimal pick, just because of the amount of damage you do. You do absurd damage. But also look out for barrier heroes. Barrier heroes are probably the biggest threat to Roadhog. Sponging up or negating his damage is going to be... A point that makes him very vulnerable because that's really the only thing he has going for him so do keep that in mind optimal picks can range from Lucio to Mercy to Soldier to McCree to Genji it really just depends on who you can get and when so optimal picks anyone within 20 meters that you can pull towards an unoptimal situation like team fights and other things I think the only character that is really slippery when it comes to Roadhog is diva in all honesty because she can kind of put up the fence matrix and block off the shotgun blast you know things like that so yeah roadhog's pretty much the double-edged sword when it comes to counter picks and optimal targets it's all about spacing ladies and gentlemen all about spacing let's talk about roadhog team composition shall we so the pick conditions for roadhog are really 
simply if there is a barrier tank present and your team wants some more damage that's the condition you should pick roadhog roadhog is a very easy to use hero and he provides a lot of damage however i think as a solo tank he is very ineffective i just want to make that clear i think barriers are really really important in overwatch and they really complement any team composition so those are really the pick conditions for roadhog so let's talk about some of his bffs like I mentioned before, barrier tanks. Barrier tanks run great with Roadhog because they help soak up a lot of damage and allow him to close the gap on his enemies really well. I find that running with Reinhardt is definitely one of the most satisfying experiences when you're rushing as Roadhog. You guys can do a lot of damage with each other. And if you hook another tank and pull them towards you, Reinhardt is just a great way to keep them close to Roadhog so he can continue to do optimal damage. Plus, Fire Strike is a really great 100 damage right off the bat as well. And it can help Reinhardt get a free charge if you coordinate it properly. It's, it's, it's a beautiful thing. I really love running with Reinhardt for some reason. Other best friends forever for Roadhog, we got Mercy. Mercy is always good because Mercy is going to be able to charge her ultimate off of you. Letting her charge her ultimate off you is almost a strategy within itself because Resurrect is such a powerful ability for Mercy to have. And it's probably one of the best support ultimates in the game because it puts the team in in such an uncomfortable situation or the enemy team rather so keep that in mind mercy's great for the sustain as well as the ultimate charging not always using your heal again i think i mentioned that in the kit section so i'm not going to go too in detail lucio is also pretty good with roadhog because lucio can use amp it up which is going to allow him to Increase the effectiveness of his speed boost, allowing Roadhog to move faster and effectively help him dominate spacing a little bit more. It's really fun, and I recommend it every day of the week. I wish more people played Lucio right now, but it seems that most people want to STD Spanky when they play Lucio. So it's not as effective as it used to be, but hey, it's still great when it happens. Also, breaking it down guarantees Roadhog can run at an enemy without dying. It's pretty great. Uh, that's really, I think that's all for BFFs for Roadhog, guys. The team composition is very simple. Like I said, you only really need barrier tanks. That's the only condition that Roadhog needs to exist. If you don't have a barrier tank or supports, then you need to play as one of those roles. But he can easily count as a DPS. So he's kind of got a hybrid role going on for him there. Also, probably the best shotgun character in the game. No offense to Reaper, but he's got a lot more going for him than Reaper does. And I about covers it. So what's my verdict when it comes to Roadhog, this massive man, this murder machine? I love this guy. This guy's great. I don't traditionally enjoy playing tanks in Overwatch, but I absolutely love Roadhog. He's a lot of fun. Probably not top five for my personal favorite heroes, because it, again, he's the tank role. I don't really enjoy playing tank all that much, but I pick Roadhog when I know we need some extra damage and I don't want to work too hard. It's great. So let me go over some of the reasons for why I love this character. First of all, he's viable. You can play him competitive, you can play him casual, you can play him in solo queue. All of these work really well with him. He never really feels overly weak unless you don't have barrier tanks on the field. Now up next, he's freaking balanced. I freaking love how balanced Roadhog feels now. He doesn't feel completely brain dead anymore. It doesn't completely line up with the target 100% of the time. It centers up with him relatively well, but Roadhog doesn't feel overly cheap anymore. I'm not getting hooked through walls. I'm not getting hooked through the damp ceiling. You feel like you actually have to think about using your hook now, and it doesn't recharge every six seconds. Gosh, that was stupid. So yeah, he feels really good in the balance way as well, and I think that that's an anecdote that is worth mentioning. He doesn't feel underpowered because of his nerfs. He feels like he's in a really good spot right now. Now, one of the things that is really, really awesome about Roadhog is just the top-notch ease of use. And I know people might be like, oh, it's a brain-dead hero and he's boring because of that. Well, that's your personal preference. I think it's a beautiful thing to have a character to, that you can flex into if someone takes your main, for example. Having top-notch ease of use allows more players to access him at any given time, so why on earth is that a bad thing? I have no idea. Now... Probably the best part about Roadhog in general, outside of Z's of use, is definitely his great damage and sustain. Roadhog does absurd damage, guys. I didn't always know that until I actually went in and did the lab segments for this video, in fact. 
I didn't realize his damage was so freaking high. It's just really awesome, and it feels great when you pull off those kills. It's just, it's, ah, uh, and he even has a heal. He has a heal that's literally just a heal. It, it's, it's wonderful. So great damage plus sustain, that's awesome. Now, another thing that I like about Roadhog that most people probably won't take advantage of is his great ability to chew through barriers. Not a lot of heroes in this game are great at chewing barriers, but he has like a great gun for chewing barriers. His L2 can chew through barriers when it's used properly, that is. Refer to lab segment if you skipped it. It's just, eh, not a lot of characters do that effectively. And Roadhog is definitely a reliable hero to just get in there and chew through a barrier if it, it's a barrier war going on. Again, great damage, great ability to chew through barriers. Even his ultimate is great at chewing through barriers. Not a lot of heroes have this aspect about them, and I love it. And finally, I like Roadhog because, in my opinion, he's the best option for a shotgun character in the game. I don't think Reaper is nearly as useful as Roadhog. I think Reaper is very susceptible to just getting killed. He doesn't have a lot of momentum. His passive's supposed to give him momentum, but I don't feel like it's enough most of the time. A lot of characters seem to dominate Reaper in spacing, whereas Roadhog, he has a bit more options, it feels like. Because Reaper, you're encouraged to kind of go in and backline, but he's kind of awkward about it. Reaper's kind of sluggish compared to the other backliners. Like, think Sombra's faster, Genji's faster, Tracer's faster, and it feels like these characters can even take advantage of Reaper at times. Reaper can't even go into Wraith form if freaking Sombra decides to hack him, he's very vulnerable at that point. And he has to get in close, which again, being a sluggish character, it's very easy to hear him coming. Whereas Roadhog, he brings you to him within like a snap of a finger. And that's what makes Roadhog so great. And not only that, but his gun, even though it only has four um, shots in the muzzle, I don't even know what you would call it. It's like weird. It's like a blunderbass that shoots four times. It doesn't make any sense, but you know, whatever. He's got like four shots, but the absurd damage that it does at point blank is just ridiculous, guys. So it's a one shot machine. So, in my opinion, Roadhog is the best shotgunner in the game. I don't think anyone's even going to dispute that at this point. Except Reaper's ultimate is probably a bit cheesier, I guess. It's easier to implement, but you can still be punished during it. It's a, it's a very beautiful thing. So, guys, that concludes my guide on Roadhog. I hope you enjoyed. I really enjoyed making this one. This one was a lot more interesting than I thought it would be. A lot of people were like, oh, you're going to... Like, I got a request to make a Roadhog guide. I actually initially laughed it off as he just chains people and shit. But now I regret that because his kit is actually very spacing dependent and you need to understand where you need to be and when to implement which type of shot and being able to aim ahead of targets if you're using the L2 at a bit of a distance. But you can do massive damage and it just feels really good. He's enjoyable. So that's it. Kissing off.